Well, welcome back all you hobbyists, brewers, subscribers. We're on a road trip. And we're headed out to Walker's uh, Honey Farm. And that's in Rogers, Texas, just south of Waco and uh, north of Austin, for those of you who are interested. And uh, we had a lot of requests for meat. So it's about an hour away from Barley and Hobbs. And uh, we're leaving out early in the morning. We're gonna link up with Clint, the owner, and we're gonna get a first-hand look at how the experts make me. Well, we're here at Walker Honey Farm and I'm getting ready to go inside. We're gonna meet the owner, Clint, and we'll get this thing on the road. Hey, hey I'm George. Clint. Hey, nice to meet you, Good man. Meet Thanks you, for George. having us. Oh, man, thrilled to have you out. Great, uh, okay. Well, if you want to, let's, uh, we'll sit down and you can tell me what my left and right limits are. And, sounds uh, we great. Get on, okay, Come great, on we'll get on board. I am so glad that you're, you're allowing us to do this. Now, um, I've got a lot of folks that are interested in me. And I know you do much more than that, so please sure. uh, give us a rundown on what the business is like. I know you go bead a bottle, and that's right, right. sort of like a strange term for me. Sure, sure. So yeah, we do uh, we do bead a bottle, and we don't just say it, but we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we own the beehives. What that means for us is we are beekeepers, and we've been beekeepers since 1930. My, wow. my grandfather went broke in the grocery business mm -hmm. in the Depression. And uh, the next spring, he had a few dollars left, and uh, out of closing out the grocery business, bought some bees. And my grandfather, my dad, through his whole career, from the time he graduated high school until my wife and I took over operations in 1994, uh, was a full-time beekeeper. Uh, we've been in it 25 years. My son is now our lead beekeeper, so wow. that's the fourth generation of our family that's, uh, that's producing honey. So, Grandpa sold the first crop out of the back of the Model A in the old friction top cans, yeah, like the yeah. sorghum used to come yeah. in. And oh, we've come a long way from there. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So, we're still bottling honey. We've been bottling honey for 88 seasons. This is our wow. 88th year. Uh, but we do a lot of other things that come out of a beehive. We do uh, beeswax and bee pollen and comb honey and... Uh, we cream, do creamed honeys, and we do a lot of other stuff. I understand stuff. you also do peanut butter. We do. We grind a Texas dry roasted peanut, made right here in Texas, and uh, we grind it in our Australian peanut mill, put a little sea salt in it, a little uh, uh, organic cocoa butter and peanut oil, make a peanut butter and honey. Our fresh local wildflower honey goes in the mix, and uh, we're on the grocery shelves around Texas with that with oh, that wow, product that also. Great, yeah. But one of the most exciting things, and I think the reason you're here and yeah. probably the reason that your audience is interested in, in, in uh, seeing your video on your YouTube channel about this, is that we started extending our concept of bee to bottle about seven years ago. In 2011, we opened Dancing Bee Winery, which mm -hmm. is a meadery. We make honey wines, do a few grape wines, um, I think today you're going to help us press some grapes. Mm -hmm. uh, we're making an estate pie mint. That's a honey and grape wine together. It's called a pie mint. And they're mm. fermented together, the honey and the grape juice. Wow. I, so, we're going to get a lot more of that from Chase, right? Yes. I mean, he's, your, he's your expert. We're going to let you go in and spend some time with Chase, our mead maker. That's great. Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's fascinating, uh, but you've got you, your beat a bottle, and when you transition, I know you do specialty, you do wines, mm -hmm. um, and you've got a whole list of wines, uh, and you're right, we're here primarily for the mead, so, but I'm interested in all of those processes, but you know, our claim to fame is to try to provide uh, and produce actual knowledge, you know, the, the scientific, mm -hmm. right. and there's an art form to this too as well, not just all the science behind it, but sure. there's an art to it. Sure. Um, so we figured we'd come to the experts, and that's you. So I we're thrilled. We're thrilled to have you here. Oh, that's that's absolutely great. So, um, yeah, let's. I, I would like to meet your mead maker, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, man, we would love nothing more, George, than to take you into the cellar. Uh, like I said, we're getting ready to press our uh, grape crop that we picked here on site this year, and we're putting it with our wildflower honey, so it's a oh, true wow. estate pie mint. Yeah. I won't get too deep into the terminology, yeah. but pie mint is just a grape and honey sugars fermented together. Wow. Uh, wow. So Chase will get you up on all that, but we want you to meet our mead maker, Chase Cohagen, and uh, we're going we're gonna to press some grapes today. Okay. Hey, and later on, we'd like to meet the, the, the true owner. 
Oh yeah, Janice. well she yeah she we'll, will we'll be she will be here. Okay, great. Because <laughs> I know you know no no good no good program or no good plan uh, is is possible without the leadership. We so, want you to meet the boss. Yep. What we what we call around here the queen bee. Yeah, of course. Of course. Duh. Okay, great. Well, look, I, I know that everybody wants to see this, so let's get on to business. And if you would, like, show me around. Let's go to the cellar. All right. All right, George. Let's go meet Chase. Hey, all right. Chase, this is George Duncan. Chase Hello. Kagan. Chase, oh, it's good to meet you. Absolutely. So I understand it's a you're the expert. You're, uh, that's you're what the they guy tell me, got... yeah. All right, good. <laughs> We're going to walk through this slowly today because a lot of folks want to just know, how's this done? Well, let's um, show them. Great. Okay, yeah. well, hey, Clint, thanks a lot for your time. Glad I appreciate it. And we'll let, you know, we'll let you know how things go on the outtakes. <laughs> Very, <laughs> good. Very good. Right. <laughs> good. Let's get at it. Cool. Real quick job to see in the some more. We're, we've got this great big fermenter here that's got grape skins and honey and it's already fermented. And what Chase is going to do is walk us through the process of how they take this out. They're going to put it in a bladder. You know, you remember the oh, big round press that I had with the arm? Yes. Got one that's pneumatic. And we're going to watch them do all the press and all the juice will come back out. And then we'll get on with what we're going to do with yeah, It's juice. right outside this door. It's coming. Now, Chase, how, how important is... Uh, is sanitation and, had, and, and sanitation is very important. Yeah. And now, how do um, you accomplish that here? I use a mm -hmm. no rinse acid sanitizer. Uh huh. Home brewer's best friend. Star, Star sand. sand. That, you know, that's something we talk about all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is absolutely great mm -hmm. stuff. This will last you quite a while. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I, I go through those faster than I'd like to admit. Well, yeah. I'm sure you do with a large <laughs> operation. Yeah. But yeah. The no rinse. So yeah, I use it uh, for sort of like my paddles. You know, I'll, I put it in a spray bottle. Sure. Spray, shake yep. it, and I can use it. Any uh, no rinse, non alkaline, um, or maybe alkaline is the wrong word. Maybe it's halogen chemicals yeah. you want to avoid. But uh, things like chlorine bleach yeah. is not allowed in this room. Um, chlorinated phenolics become food for the bacteria that creates cork taint, TCA, wow. wet cardboard taste in wines, and that's perceptible at like three parts per million, something real small. Oh, man. So, no rinse. You are uh, definitely the expert. We've got we to keep talking and getting all this information, yeah, man. Yeah, this is absolutely. fantastic. Okay. Um, so, those have been sanitized. Okay. And now we're going to fish some grape skins out all of All right, tank. let's do that. George, do it. Yeah. We're just going to do now small There's our press. Here. And if you want to take a look at that. You can see oh, those wow. grape skins. Oh, wow. And they've given up Let's a lot of their colors. Let's get a look at this. Yeah. Now, this is, uh, well, and this is what we're working with. You can see that's a bucket no. of grape uh, skins. Which oh, I don't this really want to see This is amazing. Yeah, we're here so working. We're going to go dump this in, I think the, for now, in the bladder I'm going to let the juice settle, and we don't want to overflow yep. until someone's manning buckets on that end. Gotcha. Boy, that looks good, doesn't it? Oh, that? here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna... Look at that run. That's good color. Yeah? Oh. I like it. <laughs> I like it the way it is. <laughs> For being 40% grape liquids and 60% a mead must, yeah. that's looking like a full-on 100% red to me. Those uh, black Spanish have a lot of color to give up. Now, yeah, you call it you call it a, pi a pimerid? Piment. Piment. P-Y-M-E-N-T. <coughs> Put the letters on the screen. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's just the fancy official word for a grape and honey wine. Uh -huh. The big umbrella term <laughs> uh, is mead. Under right. that you have melomels, or yeah. fruit meads. Okay. And within the category of melomels, <coughs> a piment is a grape mead. Oh, okay. So a grape melomel is a piment. There's all, there's all kinds of nerdy words you can uh, get oh, okay. into. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So I'm actually going to be using this little strainer now. Who would have known? <laughs> All right. I'm going to have you hold this bucket right okay. up here because i got to really get down deep here. Oh, but you ferment on the grape. Yes, absolutely. Um, and that's just, you know, as soon as you crush grapes, that juice is sitting there yeah. ready for anything to start consuming the sugars it's got to okay. offer. So oh, great. you want to get your good, healthy yeast colony in there before... Mm -hmm. Other funky bacteria growing on your grape skins take over. Yeah. Now, you know, I heard from... Um, and we've discussed this before about, you know, a home brewer that's making wine, let's say just straight from grapes or mead with grapes, um, that freezing the grape before using it causes the, cell, the, the cells to, ex, ex, to it, burst. And then yes. Um, I think you're talking about uh, what, cold maceration. Yeah, yeah. Something, there's a fancy word for what they do. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, to kind of break down the cell walls yeah. in the grape, uh, gets it a little more ready to just give up flavors. Oh, okay. I mean, um, it's a good thing to do, but not absolutely necessary. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Well, me, I'll go pour this in there. We'll okay. get pretty full here. And the whole time these have been fermenting, they're making alcohol, but they're putting out CO2. Yeah. So every time I lean down in this tank, there's no oxygen down there. <laughs> It'll burn your nostrils uh. a little bit. Well, the uh, CO2 is heavier than air, so it's all, you're always going to have that blanket on top, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So while it's hurting my nose, it's actually protecting the wine yeah. <laughs> from the oxygen. Which is your worst enemy after fermentation? Uh, well, yeah, that and fruit flies. Oh, okay. Oh, that's <laughs> enemy number one, for sure. Oh, yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, it. now you got about 30 gallons of grape juice, mm -hmm. and so this pie mint, you're gonna, you've added to honey, so how much honey did you add? I added about, uh, well, I added about 60 gallons of mead must, okay. uh, aka honey water, Right. Um, and that was about 20, 40. Okay. Um, so there's like 20 gallons of raw honey in here, oh, Okay. Uh, plus the water it took to thin that so I could ferment it, right. uh, so it is about 40% grape wine happening and 60% mead happening all in the same tank together. Now, here's, here's a big guess for you. Okay. At the end of all of this, and you got all this made and it's all finished in bottle, how many bottles do you think you get out of that? Or how many gallons will come out of that? Oh, I bet on 91 gallons. Wow. And I'm oh, saying yeah. that. And you're I'm, saying 91 because you know. <laughs> no, because I'm guessing we lose about nine gallons of dry grape skin okay. uh, volume. Okay. Um, everything else should make it to the bottle. Uh, cool. Nothing goes wrong. Yeah. And each gallon uh, is about five, ga five bottles of mead, so we're looking at maybe 450 or so. Wow. Yeah. Should last a little while. Phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. And this is really no different than making mead at home. It's just on a larger scale. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, <laughs> when I was doing at home brewing, I was just trying to find the biggest vessels I could because yeah. I'm going to take time to mix honey and water and yeah. pitch some yeast. Make it, make it big. <laughs> wow. Now, from what I understand, you're going to call, see, because you haven't explained to me. I, I know it's a pie mint, but you, it's an estate pie mint. What, yes, no, it no, is. Why estate? What's that? Estate. Uh, this is a pie mint of the Walker Honey Farm Dancing Bee Winery estate, meaning everything going into this recipe was grown or harvested right here. Um, this is grapes from our vineyard. Oh, wow. Yeah. 100 feet honey. away and honey from our bees oh. right here. So that makes it it makes it unique, mm -hmm. as in it comes from here. Yeah, There's we are out. we are oh, not ordering great. honey or grapes from anyone else. Yeah. Oh, okay. Special. This is exhausting. Oh yeah, I can. <laughs> oh, I Bending can smell, over there. I can smell the alcohol. Oh yeah. Oh, it's it's got it has got well, a why, really good I, floral odor to yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I keep saying I have to keep coming up for air. It's not a <laughs> it's not a metaphor. Yeah. I need oxygen. Yeah. You're working here all day, make you happy. <laughs> I just, I just might start yeah. skipping. Yeah, I gotta catch my breath oh. now. All right, we're good. Oh, we're good. good. To dump all right, that. Let's, let's, we're gonna drop this last bucket into the bladder uh, press, and then we're gonna take you over there and show you how that thing works. Ah. Yeah. So we've got that bladder that's expanding because it's being pushed with air. That inner tube down there is on top of the grapes to keep them low. Uh, and as that expands, we should start seeing some juices flowing through here. There, yeah, I can see it coming. A little bit running, that's good. <laughs> yep, it's starting to run. There it's running. So now we'll definitely just watch this as it, as it trickles in. This is amazing. And, and then so, so you'll adjust that pressure throughout the however right. long it well, takes. Right, the decision I just made, this yeah. is flowing well now. So okay. I'm, I'm stopping the pressure until it stops. Yeah. And that's because of the particular grape I'm using. Uh, the black Spanish is very pungent, it's very tart, it's got some funkiness, it's a mm. weird grape. Yeah. Um, and so we want to do a gentle press. Uh -huh. uh, I don't want to be wasting any liquid throwing my skins away, but I also don't want to be squeezing them to death. Right. The wall so this is quick. where the art comes in. Yeah, uh, sure. It's more, yeah. Of, yeah, more than the science, uh -huh. the experience and the art. I love it. 
a perfect balance between art and science. That's right. Well, we, and we like to, you know, stay sharp and, you know, monitor things like pH and know the science of our grape growing. But we also want to not lose sight of the fact that people were making wine out of grapes way before they knew yep. about any of that. Absolutely. Well, this is awesome. We'll, uh, we'll, I guess we'll come back when this is all finished and uh, when you're finished draining. This is, uh, this is the finished product. That's the juice that came out of all of those uh, grapes. That's right. This just came out of our press, um, and it's looking real thick and foggy, uh, which will change. But that means we've gotten a lot of good flavors uh, from that fruit. Uh, and this is going to go back in the tank uh, for fining, which is the uh, process of turning this nice gravy thick looking juice into something clear and sparkly and beautiful. That's where art and science meet? That's right. That's where art and science meet, George. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, afternoon. So not even 24 hours ago. Uh, that was at 1.052 and at about 10.24% alcohol. So I can go online and get an exact calculation, right. which is what I'm going to do, but I can know that this is at least right at about 11% alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, and that's quickly approaching our target ABV of 12. Now, what, please help us understand. Now, what happens when you get to 12? How, well, do, you, how do you keep it at 12? We're, we're going to add sulfites. Okay. Um, it's potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. Those two chemicals uh, will uh, stop the fermentation and prevent renewed fermentation if later we decide to add some more honey, okay. anything sweetness that could be fermented. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, this is a roaring freight train of a fermentation. It's warm. It's going very quickly. Yeah. So I'm going to throw those sulfites in today. Uh -huh. I, I, always, I think about trains when I think about fermenting. I've got to stop yeah. it. It's going to take a while to stop it. Right. Uh, so I try yeah, to get a You don't turn the big ship and you yeah, know, exactly. don't stop the train on a dime. Got um, you. Okay. And there's a good chance the fermentation, if it's super healthy, it'll just blow right past your sulfites and keep going. In that case, uh, you want to start using other stuff like uh, temperature, you can cold crash a batch, get right. it real fast, uh, real quick. If you're a home brewer dealing with five gallon buckets, that's a lot easier than if you're dealing with like 100 gallons in a big tank. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, those, those are basically our options. Um, if none of that works, I've found myself in the position where I have a batch like this go completely dry. Um, and in that case, it would be too high alcohol. You're looking at 15.5% alcohol yeah. and, and dry. So at that point, you're then back sweetening and adding volume to try and get back down. But uh, right, fingers right. crossed we won't find ourselves in that situation. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Good. I'm, I'm with you. Cool. All right. Uh, that's, yeah, we, are, um, we can throw sulfites today. Great. And I mean, that's making mead. Um, and you've all <laughs> asked about that, and so here it is. You know, and earlier you mentioned about uh, honey um, and using water to dilute it just in order for it to be able to ferment, because I understand yes. honey will not ferment. Not on its own, yeah. yeah. Pure honey, um, it's the beautiful thing about honey. It's the only food product that will never go bad naturally, as long as moisture stays out of it. Um, and so it's you know, any kind of bacteria. It's antimicrobial, so not just yeast. Um, oh, wow. But so in watering it down, we're basically undoing all the things the bees did to the nectar to make it this unspoilable product, so we're then making it, again, susceptible to fermentation and Very good. pitching our own yeast. Yep. And the ratio of that uh, is what? Uh, well, that depends. If you're like us, making high gravity meads that are going to be, you know, 12% and kind of sweet, um, you're looking at maybe like uh, one to four honey to water. Uh, okay. But, you know, if you're a, you know, a session mead drinker and you want something lighter, 3% alcohol, maybe a little bubbly, uh, you could get away with like one to seven or something oh, wow. like that. So okay. it, it can be a wide range of styles. Um, the higher your gravity, uh, generally a little more difficult to get uh, fermentation going. Yeast, they like their food, but they don't like to be overfed. Right. Um, right. So uh, that's usually a little easier if you're starting out first batch. Maybe I recommend a lower gravity. Um, but good, happy yeast will ferment just about any kind of honey must you can make. Wow. And the, the type of yeast you use, just as a final? Uh, I, I keep two on hand. I have two favorites. I can get specific. Uh, Lalvin D47 okay. uh, and Lalvin EC1118. EC1118. That's our go-to yeast it, for just It's a workhorse. It is a workhorse. It is really a um, workhorse. And I, I, it's, it's my backup, actually, yeah. because um, I'll, I'll, I'll throw D47. Say that doesn't get all the way through and it gets stuck. I have something else to pitch. Pitching the exact same strain of yeast again isn't going to do anything. Yeah. Um, so good to have at least two. Um, 
there's two kinds of sugar molecules in honey, glucose and fructose. Yeah. Generally, a yeast strain is going to have a preference for one or the other. Uh, so it is good to know what kind of sugar your yeast likes. So if a glucophilic yeast fails, you come back with a fructophilic one and not the same. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Am I absolute, getting way too No, deep? no, 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 no. That makes absolute <laughs> okay, sense. Good, that good. explanation is what we were looking for. Oh, good, good. So now you've got it. That's all wrapped up. Um, I, I guess what's we got left next is um, bottling at some point, you know, clarifying, going through this, the rest of this process, but you've got what you asked for, and we are glad to be able to provide it to you. And Chase, thanks a whole lot hey, for your help today. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Yeah. And until next time.